Bill to take the place of uh, Lorraine Gouge, and and he will um, probably come to the next meeting. He is his mother passed away, so that's why he's not here today. So should we go back? Sure. Um, do you want to do the whole roll call just quickly to make the quorum, or should we just add, note that Ms. Let's Isham just is right? that uh, okay. Doug Isham has entered. We now have a quorum at 12.06 p.m. All right. We now have a quorum, and uh, roll call was already taken, and the announcement of uh, Bill Trepanier was made, and now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and the certification of compliance with the open meetings law. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Thank you. And I think everybody's had time to look at the agenda. And is there anything that anybody wants to add? Okay, no additions. We'll move now to public comments. I don't see anybody sitting out there, okay. And now we're going to uh, consider the approval of the minutes from last month's meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Um, motion, made, motion made by Mark, second by the sheriff. Motion passes. The meeting minutes from October 11th are approved. And now we'll move to the jail report update. I don't know if it's going to do that. Well, we, uh, I'll highlight a couple of things on there. We uh, are running currently at 67 inmates a day for the last month or so, uh, which is down from last year at 80, averaging 71 per day. So that's a good sign that it's decreasing. Continue to decrease and then hopefully our programming and, and in the second branch and all those things mm -hmm. are coming into play to reduce that jail population. I think the diversionary uh, programs probably have a big impact on that too as you stated. I don't have any questions. Anybody have any questions? Did you want to make a note that um, Mr. Poquette entered? Okay. There's also the uh, attached, the Sawyer County Jail Daily Population Report. Sheriff, did you want to make any comments on the second attachment? No, I. the only thing is, uh, the big thing is um, pre-sentence uh, with cash bond is, is our big population in the jail. It used to be a third uh, pre-sentence, a third probation, and a third sentence, but the probation are down and uh, the sentence inmates are now comparing them to our total population. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. We're going to move to the criminal justice coordinator. I apologize. I did not email Lynn, but I did give her a handout 
for everyone. So, um, and if you know, our current numbers are on the back page very last because they go in order of succession. So, um, so where we're at right now, pre-trial, we have currently 140, and these are as of today, 140. Um, court reminders only are 33. Diversion cases, currently we have 12, seven referrals pending. Um, we have eight completed in 2023, five terminated as of this year. We have five on our wait list who are all incarcerated right now. And we have nine intakes pending, six of which are incarcerated. Actually, I think there was one intake being completed when I came down. Question? Um, questions on the numbers? No, question on what, do you, what are court reminders? Court reminders are people that um, assess out at lower risk on the pretrial scale. And so we don't have them come in like weekly or biweekly. We have them come in monthly only, and we only send them court reminders. So we only test them when they come in like for their court. Any other questions? Yeah, I've got. Am I really loud? No, it's just, it's just that. Feedback. Um, okay, so I, I do have other updates. Do you want those now or do you want those with the community? I have a couple other questions. Okay. So the you used the word terminated this month. And in prior months, it says failed. And is that the same thing? It is the same thing. It's yeah. if someone is not doing what they're supposed to be doing on diversion, we will send a recommendation to the district attorney's office for what's called a violation on diversion, which is different from violation on pretrial. So, but we'll send that and we e-file it. That person will go to court and have a hearing for their diversion case. Usually it gets terminated right away, but we've had some that are getting extended. So they're playing out a little bit differently than they have in the past. Okay. And then I guess the other question, and, and I, I know we're still early in this, yeah. Um, but you know, how do we start to measure this? Like um, the number of diversion cases that are completed sex successfully versus not. And then the ones that are successfully completed, if they start to show back, those individuals start to show back up in future cases. Is there like something we should be drawing like a, well, we track all of those in multiple databases, and then we can pull different reports from them. So if you tell me what you want me to pull as far as reports go, I can. I can only go back as far as when we've been entering them. So right now, like for data collection for one of our grants, we're working on um, um, on multiple trackings for arrests, and we're going back to 2019 because we're able to go back to 2019 with those specific things. For diversion, we can only go back to, I think October of 21 was our very first case. So the shorter the amount of time, the less data we're gonna be able to pull. And the fewer people that we have, the smaller our population. So statistically speaking, we don't have a lot to pull from right now for diversion. I can run it. I just don't think it's going to give us a ton of what we're actually looking for. Whereas pre-trial, we have a lot more numbers and we can go back a little bit further. And I'm not sure what I'm specifically asking for. I mean, so at some point, somebody's going to say, is it successful or is it not? Well, and that's what we're hoping to do with our data collection for grants, because obviously for grants, we have to show that we're making, that we're, making yeah and or if we're not then we need to go another route so our goal is to show that we are making progress whether you know maybe we're not mm -hmm. and if that's the case then we'll look for something else but that's what i've said all along what we're doing is not working no and i think that we need to try something different which we are and i'm hoping that this shows some success. Can we show it at this point? I don't, I don't Still think that early. we can. Okay. That's my own opinion. 
I have a question. Uh, you answered the question about the diversion case is terminated number. And you said that there's a note that goes to the DA and then there's a hearing and some are terminated or extended. What would be the difference in, in reasoning as to why one person would be extended and another one terminated? That would be a question for the court because we don't make that determination. On a case-by-case basis? Correct. I just thought you might know of the reasoning behind it. I can uh, probably answer that. Okay. If you'd like. Yes. Um, In my, uh, uh, the factors that I consider in that is uh, whether or not any steps towards progress have been made, uh, whether or not we're close towards achieving all of the goals and just some are not achieved, uh, haven't been achieved yet. Or, or if I'm, if, if I'm seeing, um, If I'm seeing progress, maybe not perfect progress, but progress, then I am inclined more to extend it rather than terminate it. Okay. Thank you. Question? Now, you you were just kind of on that same thing there about the terminated and failed. Um, You think we should have, you should have two different sections or whatever to, or is what we failed and who's terminated? I can I can send something out that outlines what you know the general everybody's case plan is is specific to that individual for diversion. So not all case plans are the same, but there are standards that have to be met. And I can send out the standards, which would that might help. But if someone isn't meeting their specific goals. And it isn't, it isn't like a one-time thing. We'll send a violation report if there's a repeated behavior, which we're not making any progress with that individual or their, their providers, whoever they're referred to, whether it's mental health, substance abuse, if they're continually not showing up for appointments. Um, in, in the eyes of you know case management and what we do, if somebody is not even making their appointments, there is no effort. Right. So we we don't we don't send those violation reports lightly. We wait. Right. But there is a difference between the termination and failed, correct? There is not. There isn't. They okay. are the same thing. It right. was just typed differently. Thank you. A failure is a failure. It's a failure to comply with the case plan. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have anything else that you want? I, to I have other updates, program okay. updates. Do you want those right now or do you want to? Yes. Wait? Okay. So um, for programming, we we went through a lot last month for programming, um, but I do have some updates for um, like HSED, GED diplomas. They run on a school year. They don't run on the same types of years that we do, but um, I have for 2022 to the 2023 school year, we had 14 HSED completion for the 2023-24 school year. So far, we have three HSED completions, we have two diplomas, and we have two people that have completed college course math foundations for the trades, which are all, all of those are outlined in those packets that we sent out last month. Okay. So that's where we're at for those. Um, We also have been looking into, as Andy had talked about earlier, programming for the, I don't remember exactly, the blueprint reading and the carpentry classes with Northwood Tech. They found us an instructor, but the times that the instructor is available do not mesh with the times that we have availability for space. So that one fell through. We're looking for a new instructor that can accommodate the timing that we have. We also have gone through all of our programming because we had certain people who were showing, who had time slots on the jail calendar, but were not showing up consistently. So we're going to try to meet with the sheriff to try to redo our policies or programs so that if somebody is scheduled to come in and meet 
and they continually do not show up, that we're able to just take that time slot off of the jail calendar so that we can open it up to someone who can come in. Not that we don't want, we don't want to cut anybody off, but we want as many services as possible. So that's on the to-do list. Um, we have um, TAD grant, which is technically due November 16th. However, I am leaving on vacation on Friday and I'm hoping to get it in before then, knock on wood. Um, and we went through all of the specifics with that last month. So that is what it is. I mean, it's still, all of those numbers are still the same. And our deflection grant is coming along very well. I'm happy that we got our um, signature page yesterday from DHS. Sheriff Motek signed it, sent it back. So as soon as we get those funds, we have been doing a lot on our back end to get things implemented so that we can get up and running as quickly as possible. We will be submitting um, our request for extension because the timeline is July 1 to June 30th. There's no way we can make that work. So that's our plan with that. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. All right, now we have the Health and Human Services Report. Hello, <clears throat> we have added actually a report within the agenda. And uh, this is on the substance misuse campaign. Just want to highlight that um, over 2,200 people have been um, attended one of the presentations. So, and the sheriff has been part of it. So thank you very much for that. It looks like um, it's been very successful when we look at the feedback, 62% um, knew a little or nothing um, and 91% learned much more than they knew before. So been very successful with that. The Narcan training, um, we've had uh, 663 trained to date. And um, we did receive the Narcan Direct Grant, so um, that was something that um, supplies us with the Narcan to be able to distribute out, so we're excited that we got that again this year. Um, other news related to uh, children, youth, and family services, we did um, hire a new supervisor, so we will be fully staffed on the leadership team for HHS, and Sarah Inselskis has accepted the position. We'll be filling the YJ position um, that she previously had, and uh, we'll continue to support the team with um, Season Westfall, who ha has been a consultant with us while we get Sarah up and running. So I will get her coming to these meetings as well so that we can talk with her directly. When is the new supervisor going to start? She is basically kind of moving into different thing, different things right now, despite she still has her caseload. Um, but we're trying to pull her into anything that we can while still be supported by season. Okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you. All right. House of Hope. Not a whole lot. Uh, the guys did deliver the first shed that they built in their new uh, workshop and everything like that. So it's kind of nice to actually see that progress going and putting that uh, programming to work and stuff like that. Um, other than that, in the community, there are still some movement going on with the homelessness, the task force, or the task force there, and then also the board we have met. And uh, um, still, the biggest things are finding locations in that area for that. Uh, and the men kind of seem to be the hardest issue. We think we think we have a uh, good area of partnering with another organization in town for the women and children. Um, obviously, we would like something more secure and safe for them. Um, and we can, doesn't need to be quite as nice. Um, so we're looking at some options, possibly doing sheds that would help House of Hope with, you know, having funds come in for them to build it and then have it be something that can be used as, um, nice, you know, places for the guys to, you know, men's shelters and stuff like that for the homeless. Okay. 
do you have any empty beds over at the House of Hope? At the House of Hope right now, we have uh, one empty bed, I believe, still currently. Um, I know they still have, you know, applications coming in. Um, and being a small program, they, they like to make sure we get the right fit in there. Other than that, things are rolling good and they're making solid strides. So so for the homeless uh, men, you're still trying to find that location? We're trying to find, yeah, um, we have a couple of options up in the air. One, purchasing a house um, that may work. Um, otherwise, we're uh, possibly thinking, like I said, doing the sheds. We are going to go up to Drummond. Brian Cole has remodeled a bus um, for homeless up there, his little thing. So we're going up to meet with him and possibly partner with him. Is that being in the short term, being able, maybe we can get people to go there for a need, you know, the night and stuff. Um, but possibly looking at something like that. So we're going up there just to look for ideas in that way. Or like I said, the sheds, um, which uh, there's a big program down in Chippewa Falls that runs oh, okay. uh, using small sheds or tiny homes, they call them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. for them. So yeah. it's, a lot in a little bit of time here trying to, and mother nature kind of puts a, a rush on us wanting to accomplish as much as we can. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Grant? No. Thank you. Uh, the last time um, I had asked the representative or the director from the women's shelter uh, Miss Rice to come to our meeting, and she said she would and didn't show up. And then I was out um, for a couple of weeks, first at a conference, and then I got sick at the conference, and so then I was out. But anyway, I haven't had a chance to reach anybody, and I thought that it would probably be better if the invitation came from Tweed, so maybe they'll actually show up. So, <laughs> so I'll see if... Um, a representative from the men's shelter and the women's shelter can be invited more formally. And so we'll keep that on the agenda and see if something happens in December. Okay, next we can go to community services update. Anything on that? No. Future agenda items that Anybody has in mind? Just one thing I wanted to bring up, and I don't know if we need to make a uh, bylaw amendment, but now that we have two two judges, our bylaws has that the um, uh, a position on the CJCC for a circuit court judge. And I don't know that we want to put both of them on because that'll increase the number of people we have to have from quorum, but maybe we need to designate a primary and a secondary. Okay. Mm -hmm. They try. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yes. Okay. So I'll add that to the the bylaw amendment uh, discussion will be made whether or not you need to add uh, primary or secondary selection for the uh, circuit judge. All right. Anything else for future agenda items? Okay. And any correspondence, reports from conferences or meetings? No. Well, I guess we can adjourn. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. The sheriff made a motion and seconded by Grant. The um, meeting is adjourned, and we'll see you on December 13th. All right. Thank you, everybody.